Hello and welcome to Richardson's RFPD's Tech Chat. My name is Simon Tompkins. I'm Senior Field Application Engineer at Richardson RFPD. I'm here today talking with Guy Moxie, who is Senior Marketing Director at Wolfspeed. And we will be discussing SICK MOSFET RDS on over temperature. Guy, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey Simon, pleasure to be here, thanks. Uh, in this chat, we will look at the conduction losses of SICK MOSFETs from Wolfspeed. Guy, can you help us to understand how the RDS on of Wolfspeed's SICK FETs compare to other available technologies, please? Yeah, thank you for bringing this up, Simon, because a lot of people migrate to silicon carbide due to its switching performance, which is clear. But there is one other huge difference that we've we at Wolfspeed have really focused on, which is RDS on over temperature, that conduction loss as well. And you can see from this chart, and this is not every single one of our technologies, but it's a general design principle. Um, this is a 650 volt part, for example, how our conduction loss is relatively flat over temperature. Now, unfortunately, it's not completely flat. That would be a utopian switch, wouldn't it? But, uh, you know, at 25 degrees C data sheet value, you know, it's uh, in this case, it's going to be 60 milli ohms, for example. Um, but and as the temperature increases to where you would actually use this part, a junction temperature of 125 up to 175 degrees C, you'll see that our conduction loss, our RDS on, only really increases by around about typically 1.3x over temperature. Whereas if you chose a GAN part, for example, or, or a, a superjunction cool MOS type of part in silicon, you can see both of those technologies will increase two to two and a half times over temperature. So what this does mean that you know when you're using a device where you need it when it's hot, you don't have to pick a data sheet to data sheet direct comparison because you will be overrating silicon carbide. You know a 60 milli ohm device is 90 milli ohms hot, whereas uh, you know a silicon device you would have to be choosing a, a much lower RDS on to be 90 milli ohms when it's hot. So. Very important thing to look for because it correlates to obviously device cost and device performance. Please choose the right RDS on. That's great information, Guy. Thank you very much. Uh, I know you've got some additional information on why this is important. Um, could you perhaps walk us through that? Yeah, I've got a couple of slides really, but the first one is a, is a direct comparison of what we've just been talking about. This was a, a, a three kilowatt, 3.3 kilowatt DC to DC. So typical secondary side sort of uh, DC to DC found in data centers, netcom, that type of application. So 400 volts in, you know, coming from that PFC to, in this case, 48 volts out, something quite familiar with a lot of people. And here, you know, switching, this is resonance. So you're switching at sort of 500 to a megahertz. So it's pretty quick which is great for silicon carbide, but when you look at the performance of these devices, and we chose two very popular silicon superjunction parts that traditionally are used in these areas, you can see that uh, they're stacking up on the data sheet to be around about 60 milli ohm. So, you know, traditionally you would go and seek out a 60 milli ohm piece of silicon carbide device. However, when you look at the performance here, you will see that we have deliberately benchmarked here a 120 milli ohm silicon carbide warp speed MOSFET. So twice the RDS on. Normally you would go running away in, in fear at that. But as you can see here, it compares very nicely to one particular sil um, silicon part and compares a lot better to another one. So again, this is a real life example of scoping out the right RDS on for the silicon carbide. Otherwise, you're going to overrate and overpay. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, cost is king here in a lot of these applications. Uh, I mean, although it's not immediately obvious, like you said, on doing that data sheet comparison, it does seem like there are um, more benefits to silicon carbide than first catches the eye. Um, 
and it's certainly if you delve a little bit deeper into the data sheet, this becomes more apparent. Um, could you perhaps offer a little bit more insight into um, you know, the cost aspect of this? Yeah, and this is why I'm centering a lot on choosing the right RDS on, because obviously with silicon carbide, we preach about increasing switching frequencies, reducing the size and the cost of the inductors and the cooling, all absolutely true and significant cost savings. But you know, a lot of the discussion can boil down to component versus component. And again, choosing that right RDS on is key. And I'm only choosing sticker prices here from catalog, you know, the, the, the one piece price, which I know is, is a general term, um, but it's what people can visibly see. And so if you, you correlate to the right RDS on piece of silicon carbide versus silicon or GAN, so in our case, let's go back to that 60 million data sheet, which is 80 odd million hot, that equals the performance of a 50 million piece of GAN or a 40 million piece of silicon. And when you look at the sticker prices lined up, and I show you some examples here, component to component, actually the silicon carbide MOSFET is the lower, more cost effective product. Yeah, it's been great that you could uh, put that into a tabula, tabular form for us to understand that's not immediately obvious, as I mentioned before. Um, very important nonetheless. So many thanks for the discussion uh, during today's chat, Guy. Sure, absolutely. Thanks, Simon, for the opportunity. No problem. Um, so th for those on the call, you can learn more about this and other topics by going to our GAN and SICK Tech Hub. Uh, you can follow our Ask an Expert link there to ask any questions where you may be facing some similar challenges and need a bit more information. Many thanks for watching us today. Goodbye. Cheers. Bye.